Yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back. We're here with another video and you all are very familiar with the company name IGN. They're probably one of the biggest game news networks out there to date and they have offered a very interesting little freelance incentive to individuals that want to go out and, you know, give them articles for people that want to go out and like give them videos and articles and things to add on to and it's caused quite a stir. It's it's caused a lot of issues and there is a big problem from the community of gamers with IGN for what they've been asking for. So first off, the tweet starts here and of course don't hate on them, but this is from Cat Bailey. I guess they work with IGN and they said, IGN is looking for new freelancers to assist with the daily flow of stories in games, entertainment, tech, and science. $20 base pay for stories. And this is per story. So you, every story you have, like every story that you're a part of, you pay you get paid at least $20 that's the base pay for this so $20 base pay but let's keep moving it's a sliding scale for heavier reporting DM with an introduction and portfolio for ideas or for details so IGN's offering a base pay of $20 per article uh, that you send them. And of course they mentioned that it's a sliding scale. So a lot of people on Twitter seem to be a little confused by this. Uh, some were a little bit angry for the base pay of $20 and they went out and they asked some more questions. And now IGN or the Cat Bailey individuals here leads on with some more details as to how much money uh, you could earn on this little sliding scale based uh, article per article income. And it gets really interesting here. So some Someone says, does this start at $20 for the news stories and more for others? The tweet is unclear. And Cat Bailey also states here that it's $20 for basic news aggregation and $50 for slightly more involved stories, finding fun community angles that is not sourced from another outlet or social media person, and up to $300 or $300 and up for more in depth multi source reporting. So $20 for base pay. $50 for something that's a little bit more out there and $300 for like a full scale story that an IGN employee probably would do. So this, as you can see, probably, uh, you know, pissed off a lot of people on Twitter and this is reasonable and I'll, I'll get into why. When I think of IGN, I think of a company that is big. I think of a company that receives money, a company that has connections. And I think of a company that is out there creating their own news, using their own sources, using their dedicated workforce. Now, I also think that freelancing is really good, but the way that they're throwing it out here, it makes it seem a little bit more of a quantity over quality type of matter, which is something that I am very scared of because when I think of these big video game companies, I want to make sure that I am getting the best, that I am getting an individual that is putting in the most effort, that is actually in tune and enjoys what they're doing as in, and enjoying the video games. Because at the end of the day, as a gamer and as a person that takes in gaming media every day, I want there to be individuals that genuinely do care behind this. And there are some freelancers that genuinely do care, but when you pump out $20 per article and then you set a scale based on $20 to $300 for it, things in my opinion at least can be uh, very spammable. Like if I really wanted to start a little side hustle, I would just find each and every little pinpoint of news that I could from any source, from any country or from any area. And I would supply this to IGN. Now they haven't really made it clear, like what type of article gets accepted and what doesn't. They don't even state if your article would be fully recommended. Like there's not a really big system at play for this. They don't really explain that if an article can be denied or anything like that, what review team goes over this? What are the criteria that differentiates a $20 article to a $50 article? Because I know they said that it says funding and finding a fun community angle here that's not sourced from another outlet. But you know, a lot of outlets cover a lot of things every day. It's, it's very interesting that they say this, that there's that much of a differentiation from $20 to $50. I can only imagine what the difference between a $50 article to a $300 article can be. So yeah, this is, this is 
very interesting. It makes me worry because a lot of companies will try to lowball you. You know, you'll throw the best work that you can out there. And with IGN being a popular company, I know that companies have to follow those tactics of staying up there, staying relevant, but also not lending out too much money and being tactful with this and that. So they'll try and ball you out on a lower budget. So I really don't want people putting out $300 effort, you know, articles, that have had all of their time, that have had all of their energy, that has all of their passion and love instilled into it, and they get lowballed for like 20 or 50 bucks off of something that could sell a lot more. You know, uh, that, that, that right there worries me. I've also seen pieces of like videos and content that, you know, if were given to a company, would be bought at $20 or $50, right? But then that article became something that was so good that it was seen by thousands upon millions of individuals. Where does the funding go for that. If you've already sold an article for $20, there is no increased rate, right? If this article blows up and the company makes more money off of it, because there is still ad revenue. There is a lot of other things that companies attach to these articles to gain funding. You know, I would think that IGN would want to try and gain more and spend less. That's usually how these companies go. But I think that's also something that's going on with independent gaming. You know, these sources nowadays, it's starting to turn into a, uh, we rely on information based off of individual individuals because there's more passion and there's more career there. Not to say that the people at IGN don't have a passion for this stuff, but usually when it's in a rushed workforce that's, you know, focused on pushing out content as fast as possible, you lose a lot of passion, you burn out, and you don't feel enjoyment from that anymore. And I don't know, I just feel like this is, uh, again, another way for a lot of people to start spamming these bullshit crap articles out to the whole world. IGN and taking them in and then just mass uploading them. This creates a very weird quality problem. And you know, if not handled correctly, it will just turn into a very shitty search tab for when I look on my IGN app. IGN was already on the, the ice with me when it came to certain reviews. I feel like their takes were a little bit, you know, pickpocketed for money. But I think that this definitely needs a little bit more tinkering and it's gonna need a lot more work. So yeah, that, that's really my whole thought on that there. But what do you guys think about IGN's little pay pricing for their new freelance work? Do you think that this is fair? Do you think that this is bad? This Could this be a good direction or could this be something that's bad? I would really love to hear what you all have to say down in the comments below. Hopefully you all can share some of your amazing news and uh, your thoughts and commentary with us as well. And again, thank you all for coming through on the JTX network. Hopefully you all enjoyed this here. Uh, if you like these videos, make sure to hit that like and the subscribe button. You know what to do. Support the channel, support the commentary, and I'll be able to bring you guys a lot more. But without further ado, thank you all for watching and peace out.